Well, welcome back. And I, and I say back because I hope that you first listened to uh, part one of this uh, little mini-series. Uh, and in it, we talked about living frugally and saving money, starting a side hustle uh, in a trade, a good, hard, solid, blue-collar skill. Uh, that's kind of what we discussed in the last one. And, and in the last section, I, I approached everything as though you were a, a twenty early 20s, just out of college person ready to start your life. Uh, well, what if you're not early 20s, just getting out of college ready to start your life? Uh, what if you have different scenarios? Let's say you are 40 or 50 years old and you've made a bunch of mistakes. You were never taught other things or you lacked the discipline to do things right. Um, but you, so you lacked the knowledge, discipline, whatever it was. And you now find yourself 50, fat, um, homeless, carless, life just kind of is sucking. Or maybe you're having a good life and you don't care about money. Uh, if you don't care about money and the stuff that it can buy, this isn't going to be of any interest to you. I'm, not, I'm surprised you've even clicked on this, uh, this podcast. I think I titled it pretty honestly. Uh, but I'm going to assume that you give a darn about getting ahead in life and, and uh, building up some financial wealth. So how do we start at this age? Well, you know what? It's the same as if you're 20. You're just way behind the ball. You will probably never end up having as much money as the 20 year old who's listening and taking my same advice. Uh, it's just, it's, it's how things work. The, the rule of 72 that we discussed in the last, uh, the last section, uh, let's say you're doubling your money, uh, every 10 years. Uh, that would be if you're getting a 7.2% return. Um, that's, you're not gonna have that many years left to live. What do you have? If you're 50, you have what, 20, 30 years left to live. Chances are, especially if you're fat, you've got less. Um, and I'm fat and I think I only have, I'm 50 right now. I think I'm, uh, my life expectancy is 76 based on all the inputs that I, I put in. So somewhere right around 74 to 76. Uh, so yeah, I've only got 25 years left. So that's only going to allow me to double my money, uh, a couple times very different than the person who is 20 and gets a pretty decent nest egg by the time they're 30. Uh, you know, maybe they have two, three, four hundred thousand dollars by then. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking in mid 2023 money, which is rapidly inflating, not hyper inflating, but it's headed that direction. Um, so uh, maybe these numbers aren't making sense when you're listening to this. I sure hope they are though. I hope that I'm so wrong about hyperinflation coming. I hope you're listening to this five, 10 years from now. And, uh, you're like, what do you mean hyperinflation? You know, a loaf of bread is still $4. Uh, oh, I hope that's the case. I hope I'm so wrong. Uh, okay. That, that was, I got off, off base a little bit there on my inflation thing. Uh, let's get back to, uh, what you can do. What you can do is everything I said in part one, just work hard, uh, maybe set different, uh, I don't know, need levels or preferences or standards for your life, uh, what you are and aren't willing to put up with. Uh, yeah, it would be nice at 50 years old not to have to lift heavy things. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to sleep in a place that's quiet at night. Uh, it'd be nice to have a nice vehicle. But if you don't have that stuff, there's no magic. Don't go wasting money on lottery tickets. Don't, don't fall for all the scams. Uh, chances are it's just, it's going to take you longer. You're, you're not going to probably, you're probably not going to die wealthy, um, which maybe that's okay. And, and maybe you set a different standard and you say, I want to enjoy the, these last 25 years of my life. And what I enjoy doing is fishing. Well, maybe look around the country for a place that you can go and be a, I don't know, a fishing guide or, uh, work at a marina or something where you have access to what it is that you love. Uh, my advice to young people is not to go do what you love. It is to go and make a bunch of money doing stuff that other people value. But maybe it's different. If you're 50 or 60 years old, you don't have that much uh, time left. Yeah, maybe you do get a job that you love so that so that that's your retirement. You're, you're making do until you die with zero. Uh, maybe that's not the worst move in the world for you. Um, so that that's it for the age thing. But what if, on the other hand, you are 16 years old and you're listening to this, you're bored with high school, you're getting good or bad grades, who cares, uh, nobody else will ever again, uh, even though school makes a big deal out of it, your parents maybe haven't taken the initiative to 
uh, learn anything about John Taylor Gatto's work. So they still think high school is a good idea. And you've got to keep up with that crap for a, another year or two or three or whatever till you get your high school diploma. Uh, start educating yourself. I'm sorry to say this, uh, but you have wasted uh, the whole educational life that you've had going to kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school. All of that is, a, is a, almost a complete waste. Um, the conventional wisdom is that you've gotten, let's say, 100% value out of it. I'd say 5% of it has been of much value. And it's not going to change if you go to college. Maybe you'll get 10% value out of that. Don't do that. That's what everybody else is doing. Now, I say that in general terms. If you have an entrepreneurial mind, if you're smart, if you have discipline, if you're a hard worker, if you're creative, if you're that kind of person or want to become that kind of person, then skip college. Uh, that's another good book, Skip College by Connor Boyack. Uh, yeah, read that. Uh, so what do you do instead of college? Well, you gonna, you want your education. Get the, get the better education than college would have given you. Just don't do it through a regular accredited university uh, unless you want to do something that requires a college degree. But like, don't go get an MBA from anywhere except the top three schools who offer MBAs. If you're not going to Stanford or Wharton or, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe another handful of schools, if you're not going to one of those, uh, don't go at all for an MBA or for uh, computer science or social media or any of those kinds of things. If it is something that you absolutely have to have college in order to have a degree, I don't know, maybe being a physician or an attorney, if there's no way to go out and do things in a roundabout way, then I guess you, you gotta go. But try to find a way to get around it. For example, why do you wanna be a ter an attorney? May how about being an arbitrator? How about starting your own blockchain-based arbitration company and just studying really hard for a year? You can easily, in six months or a year, while working full-time at a, at a job that's paying you money at age 17 or 18 or 19, you can still get in 40 hours of study a week and if you're doing it in a concentrated way, you're going to be so well educated in six months or a year. You know, you, you'll beat any bachelor's degree out there. Uh, that's the way to go. So let's say you're 18 years old. You're, you're free from the high school. Throw away that diploma. You'll never need it again. Burn it or whatever. Or toss it on the back shelf. Uh, and then get to work. Um, figure out some business that you can start. If you are really, truly dirt poor. You've got nothing. Your parents have asked you to leave their house, which I sure hope they have. This is the best lesson you'll ever learn. If they're letting you stay in their house after you graduated from high school, they are ruining you, as they would say in Tennessee. They're spoiling you rotten. Um, take advantage of it, but boy, should you ever appreciate them and get out of there as soon as possible. Um, that's not, they're trying to get old and retire and they don't need your lazy butt hanging around complaining that you're not making enough at work. So get out of there as soon as you can. Uh, but yeah, maybe the first six months or a year, you take advantage of uh, that housing situation to start getting some money built up. <coughs> All right, so if you let's, let's say you don't have that luxury of a, a free place to live or a free car or whatever. All my same advice is hold. Get a job making as much as you can, save as much as you can, live frugally. Now, what about the education part? Start a business. Got to start businesses. Start anything. And I would even say the first business or two that you start, don't do the best one you can think of that you think is really going to work well because you are going to make a ton of mistakes. That's, that's called education. You're going to make a lot of mistakes in your first business or two or three. So don't do your best idea right off the bat. Do something silly that you don't really want to do in the long term. Uh, maybe start up a, uh, if you heard my idea about the solar panel cleaning business, start that up. Uh, yeah, why not? If, if nobody else is doing it, you're going to learn how, how to go about sourcing materials, which would be a whole semester in college, getting your MBA, um, about how to go out and buy equipment and amortizing the equipment. How long will that ladder last, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're going to learn about advertising, marketing, the difference between the two. 
You're going to learn about building relationships. You're going to build with vendors and with customers. You're going to make a lot of contacts with people. Um, definitely start that business and do it for a few months and, and see if you're making money. You're probably going to discover that you have to do cold call sale, selling. Um, that's a must in most smaller side hustle kind of businesses. That's just how it is. And it sucks and it's uncomfortable if you're like me. Uh, and I have never gotten comfortable doing it. And I would have so much more money now if I was a cold call salesperson. Uh, but yeah, make yourself do it. Teach yourself that skill. Get comfortable with about, uh, with it. Uh, maybe do something like read the book, uh, The Game. And it's actually about uh, pickup artists picking up women. Um, but the the ideas in there will be great for cold call sales. Um, so read that. Read High Trust Selling. Uh, read... Uh, modern, uh, God, what is it? Modern persuasion strategies. That's an absolute must read. Uh, and so then go out and read these books. This is your college education. These books I'm recommending and another couple dozen that I'll recommend, uh, like, uh, what is it? E-Myth uh, Revisited by Michael Gerber. That's a must read. The Millionaire Next Door is a must read. There, there, are, there are a number of these that I'm going to suggest. And if you're getting through a, a book a week or a book every two weeks, uh, within a year, you're going to get a lot of books read. What is that? That's uh, between 25 and 50 books you'll have read. And that is a lot. And you actually care about this stuff because you don't want to be doing all that reading, plus doing your side hustle, plus doing your regular job. This gets old. And you're going to you're gonna want to get out of it. So that's why you get the education. So you're educating yourself by reading. You're educating yourself by making a ton of mistakes on your first business. And in three months... You've realized that you have knocked on doors, you've left flyers, you you got this great deal on radio, terrestrial radio advertising. You've realized that doesn't work, or maybe it did work for you. Uh, you've realized that the cops gave you a two hundred dollar fine because you were putting flyers under windshield wipers. Up, oh, shouldn't do that again. Uh, you've learned that you got in trouble with the city government because you didn't get a business license to clean solar panels in their city, and and you've built a website. Uh, for your business and you've learned what a headache that is and and you had a buddy's cousin who says he'd do it and made all these big promises and then he doesn't come through and well now you've learned how about trusting free labor uh, you've hired a, a Filipino virtual assistant uh, on onlinejobs.ph and you've spent a hundred bucks a month having them help you part-time uh, with your graphic design and your computer stuff and you've learned to manage a person who doesn't speak English well, doesn't have much motivation, and is frustrating, yet you kind of need them. They're good to leverage. Uh, you've learned all this stuff. You've maybe hired a person or two uh, to help you with the taller, the big jobs where you have to get up on the high ladders. And uh, you know, now you've learned about insurance. And, and uh, you're going to learn so much from this first business. So now maybe 90 days have passed. You decide you absolutely hate solar panel cleaning and you're never going to touch that again. Well, now you're going to learn how to sell a business. And this is going to prompt you to read Built to Sell. And that's a great book. And boy, is that ever going to help you when you build your next business. Don't even bother reading it in the beginning. It won't make it, it, it won't make sense to you until you've had a business and dissolved it. And then you'll find you, you, nobody wants to buy your business. And you, you go to a, a financial advisor or a banker or whatever. And you say, why can't I sell this business? And if you ask for people to mentor you, they'll do it. You know, you, you go to a local successful small business person and say, hey, I'm, I'm brand new. I did a trial business for three months. Can I sit down and bend your ear for uh, an hour or two and buy you lunch and get your feedback? Uh, and you're going to have some mentors that just blabber the whole time about something that, you know, should have taken five minutes and they don't get all the other stuff covered. Oh, now you've learned how to pick mentors better. This is all education. This is, this is trial, this is making errors, this is learning from them, this is not making that mistake again. Uh, so basically, I guess my suggestion is mess up a bunch and then learn from it. Like really, truly, wreck your bike and then you go, oh yeah, I probably shouldn't lean that far over. I should lean less. Oh, if I'm starting to fall, I should put my foot out to catch myself. Oh, maybe I shouldn't go that fast down a rocky trail. This is all education and some of the bumps and bruises you get are gonna hurt. They're going to be just absolutely miserable. And you're going to be tempted to go get some I, I, loser job, like something that's dead end, 
you don't have to perform well, be a cop, be a town administrator or, or a, any government job, you're going to be tempted to go get that solid job that will provide you with insurance and that weekly check or whatever. Uh, this is where we separate the, the kids from the adults. Uh, man up. And if you're a lady listening to this, I guess that's up to you if you choose to lady up or man up or adult up or whatever you want to call it. Uh, don't get offended. Uh, that's real strong advice. Don't get offended by folks. Uh, just, yeah, make yourself go through all of these hard knocks and stand up strong and tall at the other end and keep going. Read Jordan Peterson's uh, 12 Rules for Life. What is it? The first one, something like stand with your shoulders back or something like that. Um, be the person you should be be a be the person who should be respected and who's proud of himself and is willing to challenge the world knowing that they're a good person. Uh, so be that person. Spend that first year or two just busting it, learning all this stuff. So that's kind of the the beginning education piece. And of course, there's a lot more of that that maybe I'll go into uh, in other podcasts. Uh, but for now, that's a good starter. If you just do that stuff, read those books. Uh, reach out if you want more specific advice. Oh, another one is uh, uh, Unscripted by MJ DeMarco. Uh, he has, actually read most of his books, the last two or three anyway. Read the last two or three. Um, they're really, really good and offer a, a great perspective, as does Rich Dad, Poor, uh, Poor Dad. Even though Robert's a little bit full of crap at times, um, it's still a good motivational book to read. Uh, and everybody's read Rich Dad, Poor Dad because uh, it's such a simple three or four hour read. Like that's one evening, that's your homework. If you're spending six hours every evening that you work reading to relax and it's your homework, like you can read that and another book in that evening. So definitely read that. Uh, it's worth it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to another uh, concept, and that is building up your reputation. And I'm actually going to end this podcast now, and I'll do that in another episode. Uh, how to build a reputation and basically be a good person. 